of the solution is neutralized by 3.6 molar or 3.6 milliliters of 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide. So you start with the known. So you have to convert this to liters. So that's 0 0.0036 liters times 0.2 moles per liter. And they just switch out liters with milliliters. You get the same result there. Now stoichiometry, it's a one-to-one -one reaction. One sodium hydroxide reacts with one nitric acid. So we know how many moles of nitric acid there would be to neutralize this much sodium hydroxide. And it was in 10 milliliters. So that's where this 0 .010 liters is coming from, 10 milliliters of solution. And so our nitric acid would have been 0 0.072 molar in concentration. Rules for writing net ionic equations. Strong electrolytes are always broken apart into their corresponding ions. Sodium hydroxide is sodium plus and hydroxide minus. Weak electrolytes are held together because only a very small fraction of them dissociate. And solids and gases are also held together in their molecular forms. To get the net ionic equation, you then subtract spectator ions. Any aqueous ion that's both on the left and on the right side of the equation did nothing and gets canceled out. And the net ionic equation must balance atoms and it also must balance charge. So give me the net ionic equation. I'm going to react barium chloride with sodium sulfate to form barium sulfate plus sodium chloride. There's one mistake up here. Barium sulfate is solid, not aqueous. Email them to you. Actually, no, I'll just give them out in the lab tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, just come to the lab, I'll have them printed off for you. I was going to say, because last time you said we're still able to use no card. Yes, you still got your no card. Last time you said you'd email us, you didn't email us. Because I totally forgot. <laughs> so that's why I'm asking you to print them off for us. That, that way, well, no, I'm just printing them off tomorrow. Everyone come to lab tomorrow, and you'll be good. Where's Tiffany? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so barium chloride, soluble salt. You'll know it's soluble because it says aqueous. If it was insoluble, it would be solid. So we break it apart into its ions. Sodium sulfate, break apart to its ions. Barium sulfate's a solid, it stays together. Sodium chloride is aqueous. We break it apart into its ions. And now we cancel out the spectators. I got two chlorines on the left, two chlorines on the right. Two sodium on the left, two sodium on the right. To give me the net ionic equation of barium plus two plus sulfate minus two forms barium sulfate. Is it balanced? One barium on the left, one barium on the right. One sulfate on the left, one sulfate on the right. Total charge of the left is zero. There's a plus two and a minus two. Total charge on the right is zero. It is balanced. Mark, how do you know when something is like plus and minus? How can you what do you mean? tell the difference like the BA2 plus? Because there was a couple examples that I saw on one of the slides that it was the other way around. Today? Yeah. Which slides? Mm -hmm. Show me which one you're talking about. It means, yes, it's a strong electrolyte. It dissolves in water appreciably. It's a strong electrolyte. Oh, I can't see your phone. I know I saw it, but you can keep going. If I find it, then I'll, I'll ask. Well, for the salts, let's make a, put an asterisk that applies to salts. Because, like, for the weak, for the weak bases and the weak acids, like, Acetic acid is aqueous in vinegar, but it still doesn't break apart. 
So for the salts, if they're aqueous, they're strong electrolytes. Because if they weren't, they'd just fall to the bottom as a precipitate. And you have to, you have to no note that with solid. Because aqueous means that it's dissolved. It's not a solid sitting at the bottom. Whereas these weak acids and bases, like those are liquids, and so they'll, they'll just be a liquid in the liquid. Christina, did you find it? Yeah, I did. Uh, which one are you talking about? Okay, so, like this one right here. How it's a minus, and then there's nothing here, but then it's minus and then plus. Okay, and so then. what happens is phosphoric acid is H3PO4. Phosphate was in the polyatomic ions that you learned in chapter 6. PO4, okay. 3 minus. If there's two H2s, that's two H pluses there. So a plus 2 and a minus 3 gives an overall charge of negative oh, 1. Oh, okay. Now this water donate, or this, this thing gives up another H mm -hmm. to come here. So imagine this H2PO4 minus. It breaks apart into an H plus plus an HPO4 2 minus. Why? Because PO4 is 3 yeah. minus and now there's only one positive. Okay. And this grabs to the water to become H3O plus. Oh, so gotcha. it was an acid base a proton transfer. Oh. All right, what is the net ionic equation for the following reaction? Sodium carbonate reacts with two hydrochloric acid to form carbon dioxide, two sodium chloride, and a water. Yes, if the hydrogen is first, it's an acidic hydrogen. So like notice in acetic acid, it's H, C2, H3, O2. There's two places for H's. The acidic ones come first, the other ones come later. So if a, if a molecule starts with an H, that's an acidic hydrogen. First, we break apart the aqueous into their ions. Sodium carbonate, soluble salt. Hydrochloric acid is a strong electrolyte, completely breaks down. Sodium chloride, soluble salt. Gases, keeping their molecular form. Liquids, keeping their molecular form. Cross out the spectator ions. Each side had two sodium pluses and two chloride minuses. To give two H pluses plus a carbonate forms carbon dioxide and water because these combine to momentarily form carbonic acid which is inherently unstable and breaks down into carbon dioxide and water. What is the net ionic equation when hydrobromic acid reacts with potassium hydroxide? D, excellent. Every strong acid base reaction is D, actually. What really happens is you form a salt and water, but the salt are spectator ions and will cancel out. Leaving H plus plus OH minus forms water, and that's the driving force between those reactions. 
Acid rain, this is atmospheric rain that is much more acidic than typical. What produces acid rain? The emission of nitrogen or sulfur oxides. You can't really avoid the production of nitric oxides because nitric oxides don't form from a fuel, they just form from the engine being hot of a car or anything that you're operating. Whenever you get a certain temperature, the atmosphere is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. So whenever you have enough energy, those two will react with each other and form nitric oxides. The one that is very controllable are the sulfur oxides. This comes from burning coal. Not natural gas, not oil, just from coal. Coal is a noticeably more dirty fuel than the others. And when it burns, these sulfur, like sulfur trioxide, can combine with the molecule of water to form sulfuric acid. So basically these acid anhydrides flow into the atmosphere, combine with water vapor, and now you have acid in the rain. And then it precipitates down to the ground. And so... I was gonna say, do volcanoes produce acid rain? Or probably. I was going to say, I thought I remembered something like way back in high school, and if there was enough, if there was enough like energy in the atmosphere or something when a volcano erupts, then it would cause acid rain. I mean, in the end, I mean, it might a little, but what really causes acid rain is burning coal. If you look at the maps of the U.S., where you really find your acid rain are in the areas that used to burn a lot of coal, the coal regions. You'll notice you don't, you don't see dots for the cities. So even in places like Los Angeles where you have millions of cars on the road, you don't see any blip because you just don't form those compounds from burning gasoline. Um, it comes from burning coal. And so West Virginia used to be pretty much coal territory. And so especially in the industrialized parts of the Northeast, they used to burn a lot of coal out there. And so that's where all your acid rain happens in the U.S. Um, whereas you don't really have that in the western half of the country because there's a lot of sulfur compounds in coal. And the worse the grade the coal is, the more sulfur there is. And so pollution levels have gone down not because we're using less energy. It's not true. We use more energy than we did 10 years ago. But we use a lot cleaner energy. Natural gas is many, many, many times cleaner than coal. And so just by switching from a dirty fuel to a clean fuel, you've seen pollution really go down quite a bit. And again, in areas of the country that never really use coal like that, you, it's definitely much less acidic. Any questions on acid rain? Questions at all? All right, that is the end of this chapter.